do heavier riders descend faster? Let's find out. Kind of feel like an out of control snowball. Seeing as we happen to be stood at the bottom of a big descent, conveniently, with a 25 kilo weight vest, we thought we might do a little experiment. Find out. Because I think I'm gonna descend much faster when I'm heavier. I remember loading my pockets with bottles when I was racing, and it felt like I'd absolutely whizzed down those mountains as a result. Well, there we go. So let's find out, but I don't, well, I don't know if I'm taking that up the climb. Are you not? No. I think, well, you're so you're stronger than me. Rock, paper, scissors. Okay. On three. Go. One, two, three. Okay, right, good luck, Sai. I'll see you at the top, it's about 10k. The science we all learnt is that in a vacuum, objects drop at the same speed due to the same gravitational acceleration. In the real world, on our bikes, however, there is air resistance. The science here gets slightly more complicated, and we must admit we did get lost trying to understand a number of the equations, hence the need for our experiment today. But we've concluded that it should ring true that a heavier object descends faster because it has a greater kinetic energy, or energy of motion. Kinetic energy is equal to half of the object's mass multiplied by the velocity squared. So, an object with greater mass should have more energy to overcome the slowing effects of air resistance, meaning heavier cyclists descend faster. That's our shoddy school physics talking, however. We're willing to be proved wrong in the comments. For example, we haven't mentioned the effects of a heavier cyclist needing to brake earlier into corners, rolling resistance, and that heavier cyclists are normally taller. It's well known that I'm as aerodynamic as a double-decker bus. So we're curious to see what the results of our experiment today will be. It was a nice ride up there, actually. Enjoyed that. Yeah. Brilliant view. What do you reckon? Oh, it's really nice. Oh, I saw them. You can see down the valley, you can see the coast on that side. Yeah. I was just thinking, yeah, what a time to be alive riding a bike. Yeah. You're right, mate. Yeah. To make this a fair and true scientific experiment, we're going to go from this white line and not pedal at all. I'm going to ride on the drops but in a fixed body position. And then, so no pedaling to influence things. And Do I know the descent pretty well, so that's not gonna change it. Do you just go for it? I think you just go for it. Take All it right. easy, okay. good luck. And he's off. Gotta say, the road surface looks a little bit greasy right now. Uh, uh. I definitely feel like I'm coming into corners with a bit more pace. Okay, getting towards the end of the run now. And I'm gonna stop it before I get to... There we go. Woo. I actually did feel like I was going quicker that time. It's definitely harder to decelerate coming into corners and you kind of just feel like you get a little bit more momentum. So uh, I am genuinely really interested to know the answer here. Oh, I've got to go back up again. <laughs> I wouldn't want to mess with him down a darkened alley in that vest. Especially with that face on him, he's, like, he's had quite a tough time getting out of there. You all right? How was the second run up with the vest on? Good. Bit out of breath. I'll give him a minute. Given that we've been riding that descent quite a bit already this week, it did feel like I was going quicker. It feels quicker, I it think. It felt like I had more inertia, more momentum. So it meant it actually it was quite unnerving going into corners because it, you know, you got to brake harder but then it just felt like I was picking up speed. So, I don't know, what are you gonna do first, weight or non-weight? Well, I think I'll go without the weights to okay. get my benchmarking, because that means I don't have to ride up the hill with it on my back. Okay. Because I can come up and you've already brought it up for me. So, yeah, I'll do mine second. Get a benchmark time, come back up nice and light, 
the send down. This is a bit like the chicken, the grain and the fox, isn't it? You've worked it out before me. Yeah. I'm good you know at rock, paper, scissors. About, <laughs> <laughs> the chicken, the grain and the fox? Isn't it the chicken, isn't it the foal, the mox and the... The foal, the mox? What? No, it's the fox, the horse and the mole. No, that's a really nice book. No, the chicken, the grain... So you've got a boat, right? And you have to get the chicken, the grain and the fox over to the other side of the river, but you've only got space in your boat for one at a time. Over, but you don't leave the fox with the chicken, you bring the chicken back and then you take the grain over. So again, you've got the fox left with the grain, then you come back and then you grab your chicken. Aren't you thinking of run away as fast as you can, you can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man? Either way, I'm going to do the same. All right. You got me? I got you. You sure? Yeah. People get surprised and they hold on to this body. OK, mate, you ready? I know what's going to happen. Beep! 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 I'm off. Are oh, you pedaling? Oh, just a little, little pedal to get away. OK, I'll do the same one. Two pedals. We're off. On the drops. OK. Right. That was the first run done without the weighted vest. Rather wisely, I've decided to do my first run without the vest. Now back up, nice and light. See what happens. I do have a feeling that the vest will be faster. There's a few bends there. I feel like I could have picked up more speed. But I'm curious. Back up to find out. It must have been quite hard riding up this with the weighted vest on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do it. Three, two, one, go. And lap. there we go. Wow, that was pretty interesting actually, it's got to be said. So I didn't feel like I was accelerating as quickly, but I felt a heck of a lot more confident through the corners, I guess because that's my usual mass. And so I felt like my technique wasn't altered. So I would imagine actually that things might even out because I was definitely quicker through the corners, or at least in my head I was. Let's find out. Oh, thank God I don't have to ride up there again. <sighs> Not sure I'm going to get this on on my own. <sighs> don't really have many muscle fibres in my biceps. Needs must. <laughs> <laughs> What's your ridiculously <laughs> epic? How did he get this on? Right, I have to do a shuffle. <laughs> Funny doesn't it? Isn't it? If anything, it's like my bike's got magically lighter. <laughs> I think I've just doubled my bicep size in the space of five seconds. Okay. Three, two, one, and we're off. Building up speed. Kind of feel like an out of control snowball. I'm really intrigued. Okay, I've got my results. You got your results? I've got my results. Go on, you go first. Okay, so with the weighted vest, which was 25 kilos, solid amount, I was only one second faster, but my max speed was four kilometers an hour faster. Well, interesting that you say that. I know mine. Okay, now. so tell me, tell me your results. <laughs> well, it's really interesting, right? Mine's the opposite. I was one second faster when I was lighter. Really? Yeah, so I wasn't as fast. Uh, my max speed was 0.3k an hour slower, but I was a second quicker over that segment. 
And I, I was talking to the, to the viewers at the bottom and I said that I felt like I was faster through the corners because perhaps I was at my normal body weight and therefore I could get my technique right. I was more confident because I wasn't having to break as hard for the corners and it wasn't messing me up at all. That's really interesting. But I, I felt like I was slower through corners and then way quicker when I was just letting it roll. Yeah, I was definitely quicker when I just let it roll and that's showing in my max speed. But still I felt I was faster through the corners because I could feather the brakes and then just when I let them go, I just felt that momentum build up again. But I mean, it was only a second in the difference, so there wasn't much in it. Do you know what, right? The fact that this tallies up with the actual physics is perhaps not a surprise, but what is weird is how people's perceptions vary. Ultimately, I guess it comes down to the fact that, as you mentioned Pidcock earlier, a very light rider, but the world's best road descender at the moment, self-proclaimed, in fact. And so I figure it's kind of what you get used to, right? Yeah. So it's all, it's a level playing field. What makes you a fast descender or a slow descender is about your technique and your brain. That is true. And perhaps I'm relating my experiences to that of a race. So I remember being able to load up with bottles, as I said, and being super heavy. But on those long descents, you're on a totally closed road, so you have some real long stretches. And you could build up, I think, a higher terminal velocity, which got you back to the bumps so quicker. So theoretically, heavier riders could be faster descenders. Heavy riders definitely could, couldn't they? I mean, it's something for us big guys and girls to shout about. It is. There Absolutely it is. Yeah. Right then, let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do our results, which are, well, fairly inconclusive, slash conclusive, uh, depending on which way you want to spin it, does it tally up with what you perceive to be true in the real world yeah let us know in the comments We're interested to hear your thoughts and as always thanks for watching we are now going to continue our ride we've got a bit of a hill to go over and so i said he'll take the weighted vest home no mate you said you 30 said. k to go back to the hotel i said if i lug it up and down the climb you're going to take it back i don't remember saying that should we rock paper scissors for it go on then after three one two three <laughs>